Welcome to the Holly Hibbard Leadership Podcast, your go-to source for actionable insights, practical advice, and inspiring stories to help you lead with faith-filled purpose at work and at home. If you're looking to equip, empower, and encourage yourself to thrive in an ever-changing world, you're in the right place. I'm Holly Hibbard, and with over 20 years of experience as a science teacher, leadership coach, entrepreneur, and relationship mentor, I understand the challenges and growth opportunities that come with pursuing your passion. Whether you're chasing career goals, taking entrepreneurial leaps, or finally reaching for those long postponed ambitions, I'm here to help. So let's get comfortable having uncomfortable conversations and explore ways you can lead your family, lead your life, and find your calling with intention and faith. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the show. I'm going to talk about talking today. Namely, I want to lay out for you the wrong way to communicate. Because whether you listen to this leadership podcast because you want to lead people in your career or in your workforce in a better way, or you want to lead your family, or you want to live your life purposefully and lead yourself toward the results and the goals and the dreams that you have, can't get there without communication. Communication is essential for connecting with other people. And while one person on their own can, yes, get a lot done, with grind and hustle and time together, if you want to go farther, being with other people is essential. It's a key ingredient. So how do we communicate with the people that we are collaborating with, that we are generating ideas with? And I'll start by laying out for you that communication, yes, you've probably heard people say communication is a two-way street. Well, I'll tell you this about that street. With the number of years in relationship coaching that I have under my belt, so often people walk around and get stuck in this mode of, if I communicate in a certain way, then the people that I am around are expected to communicate that same way back to me and back to everyone else. And I can tell you right now, not only does that cause a number of problems, but it creates a sense of a person not feeling respected, seen, heard, understood because they feel like if they express themselves in a certain way and that way is not being conformed to, then people just must not care about them or the people in their life aren't listening to them or the people in their life don't think that their time and attention is worth it. And none of that is true. It's all made up. The reality is, Everyone, whether they are an effective communicator or an ineffective communicator, not everyone communicates the same way. So first, let's start by saying the wrong way to communicate is to assume and or expect that everyone in your world is going to communicate the same way that you do. For example, You may communicate in your household one way with your spouse or significant other, and then even communicate in a similar way to the kids that you are raising or the young people in your life or with your friend circle, because those are more social. And yes, if we are with young kids or teenagers or young adults, we might communicate in a way with them that still has a level of structure and respect that the communication between us and our partner or spouse has. However, when you go into a work situation or a social situation outside of the home where you are not running around with the people that you are related to or that you birthed, people tend to be a little bit more on their best behavior. And the communication style that you use may be entirely different. In fact, I would bet that for most people, it is. When we are with friends, family, loved ones, it's very easy to fall to a style of communication that has has a lot of assumptions, that has a lot of expectations, and also there's a degree of casualness that is there. Less minding of the P's and Q's. And then when we enter a professional setting or something that is a little more formal for whatever reason, 
we'll be more mindful. And the way we talk, but also the way we listen, can shift as well. So first, yes, before I dive more into communicating the wrong way means that you can't expect everyone to be like you. Second to that is know how you communicate in each area of your life. Start to notice when you speak to the person closest to you, the person who knows the most about you, like your parent, for example. That person, you may find that you are more defensive, so you may not listen to them and you might interrupt them more frequently. That is your style of communication with that person. You may also find that when you are talking to your kid or a teenager or a best friend, you might be an even better listener. You may have more patience with them if they take a minute to get the words out or if they're not making sense right away. You may not get so flustered or frustrated as easily. You may give them more grace because of the nature of the relationship, friendship, neighbor, your kids, if you're raising young people. And then you might go into a career situation, a professional scenario, and it might shift to maybe you're more talkative there. Whereas at home, you're a little more on the quiet and introverted side. But you get into your professional stance and suddenly you are confident, you're boisterous, you are energetic. And there may be moments where the people closest to you are like, what is going on with you? Where is this version of you? Because your communication is showing the version that you are tapping into in the moment. They may be wondering where that part of you is <laughs> when you go home. Or maybe it's the flip. Maybe somebody sees you in a social situation and you blend into the wall. Or you're like me, an introvert at a party, and you're wondering where the dog is and you just want to pay attention to the dog the whole time. <laughs> And what happens then is people can look at you in that situation and go, why are they so standoffish or shy or away from people? Or they can start labeling you as the negative. Why are they being so antisocial? Everyone else is around here talking and getting to know people. When I was with them one-on-one the other day, they were super chatty. They had a lot to say. What's going on? So the way you communicate tells people about you and your character. So don't let it. How do you avoid it? Know how you communicate and how you interact with people in different scenarios. Because then I can go into a very social situation and say outwardly to people, man, I am an outgoing introvert. I'm here. I'm chatting it up. And man, I love having a cozy night at home. (laughs) And I can tell people that and use it in my conversation as I'm getting out there and putting on that hat because I'm committed to having actual connection. But I'm not going to walk into a situation and expect everyone to communicate the same way as me. And I also am not naive enough to tell myself or try to convince myself that, oh, Holly, you communicate and talk to people and listen to the same degree with every single person that I meet. I simply don't. (laughs) I just I don't. I know what my strengths are. I know where I need to work on things. I also know that with some people, I excel with my communication ability. And in some arenas, I do not. So what can you do as you're now hopefully starting to reflect on these questions? The first fold, like I said, is to notice where are you expecting others to communicate the same way that you do? Which areas of your life is it? Let's say you have a leadership role or a managerial role or you simply work as part of a team of people in some capacity. This could be your career, but this could also be being a part of the PTA. This could also be part of um, another social circle or your circle of friends. Start to notice where you are expecting people to listen and to communicate the same way that you do. Because you are placing your expectations on them and that is where your energy is going instead of your energy being placed into, hmm, how can I 
be more clear with this person? How can I help bring out the best part of this person so that they feel more comfortable to open up so that they are less of a wallflower and put the dog down for a minute and come and hang out with the rest of us? How can you be more inviting instead of more ostracizing? And that's what judgment does. That's what those expectations do when we are expecting everyone to conform to the way that we are. And the second fold, like I said before, is once you stop expecting everyone to be like you, you've got to know you. Because as the famous saying goes, you take you everywhere you go. So if you know how you likely talk and or listen when you are in a one-on-one situation compared to when you are on a Zoom call, compared to when you are around people you've never met before, just having that clarity can help you to acknowledge before you enter those situations, hey, you know what? I think when I go in this space, this is how I can grow. So as an example, I recently went to a memorial barbecue evening with my husband who lost a childhood friend and I knew no one (laughs) I knew no one I all I knew this was going to be in somebody's garage slash barn slash by a farm I had no idea okay and this is not the type of you know, rural area that I grew up in. I grew up in a suburbia. This is how my husband and I compliment each other in this way. We're very different, but I I enjoy it. And truth be told, again, outgoing introvert, I get nervous around new people. And the only person I knew in this whole place, and there were probably 100, 150 people there. There were a lot of people. I knew my husband. I knew no one else. And I knew I wasn't going to remember anybody's name. I didn't know. (laughs) I figured I got to meet some of his closest friends. And while that was assuring or reassuring, some of them were so kind and so warm. And I could tell that they were really trying to take me in under their wing for a second and say, welcome. We know that you've not met us before, but we want to make this a little less nerve wracking for you because, man, having it be 150 people to one, we're like, you know, no one and you're going to be here for hours. That might feel a certain way. And maybe for you, you might have thrived in that environment. You might have loved going from stranger to stranger to stranger and shaking hands and kissing babies and having a a good old time. I warm up to people and not to mention if I'm also tired, which I was that day, I can be even more off. So it takes me a little bit longer to warm up to people. And I appreciate when someone notices, oh, she, she seems a little quiet. Someone notices and makes that attempt. And now when I am in a situation where we are having people to our home or a party or something of that nature, and someone brings someone that doesn't know anybody, or we just had our new neighbors over recently, I will make it a point to ensure that the new person or people get to know the other people. I make it a point to say, hey, you you guys have this in common. Or hey, did you know this person also knows this person? Oh, no way. I am teeing it up. That is part of my communication style is my ability to connect people and have people who I sense feel a little uncomfortable in that scenario feel like they are right at home. That is, to me, hospitality, but it's more so a way that I show people that I care. And am I naturally like that? Am I a natural connector of people? Like if I walk into a professional conference, am I walking around and having that same gregariousness with people that I do as when I'm entertaining people in my home? No, because I'm back to the the party scenario, (laughs) except now, instead of in a backyard barn on a farm, I am at a conference and just wearing something fancier. And so I, I know this feels, for me at least, this feels a little all over this episode. But again, the main points are the wrong way to communicate. Number one is to assume that people speak and should speak and listen 
and pay attention and have more patience the way that you do. They do not. And the quicker you can notice how they communicate and how you communicate, the more understanding you can be to say, oh, we're just different. And that's not bad. It's just different. And the second point of this episode, again, is start to notice how you communicate differently in different social situations and with who. How do you talk to your family members, the young ones and the ones older than you? How do you speak to strangers in a professional setting compared to speaking to strangers in a social setting? Get to know and nail down and label how you communicate. Because I know for me, if I'm feeling a little shy in some of those social situations, I know that about myself. So now if I want to improve my ability to communicate, I know that if I can make a point for myself just to meet somebody new that day or at that conference and be the one to go first, to say hello or compliment somebody on something and get a conversation going where I actually do want to learn about the person. If I just do that one time in those more challenging scenarios for me, that's a win. And I know that's going to communicate or rather boost, yes, not only my communication ability, but also my skills as a leader. Please let me know what you think about this episode. How do you notice you communicate with different people in your life? What are you hearing or noticing by some of these examples? Are you way more social than me or are you an extroverted uh, or are you a outgoing introvert like me where you just want to go pet all the dogs (laughs) at every party? Because for some reason, it feels like I'm connecting with someone, even if it's not another person. I don't know. Another episode for another day. That's all I have for you for now. I hope this helps. And until next time, I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for listening. I'm high-fiving you right now because I'm so proud of you for putting your personal growth first. Remember, I believe in you. And with faith-filled intention and committed actions, you can lead your life purpose and family to wherever you dream possible. If you enjoyed this episode, it would mean so much to me if you'd take 30 seconds to help others discover the show. Leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, share the show with your friends and family, or screenshot this episode to your Instagram stories and tag me at the Holly Hibbard. Remember, you're not alone in this journey. I'm always here cheering you on. And until next time, stay curious, remain encouraged, and keep empowering yourself. You're doing better than you think, I promise.